Welcome, the Keeper of the Nightmares, Steve Pink. Thank you. Hi, good evening and welcome to TV Nightmares, number five. Now, you know what to expect, and that's just what we're going to give you tonight. Great stuff, just like this. Im italienischen Udine hat die Comtesse. <lacht> <lacht> That is one sauerkraut. And talking of Germans, the next set of clips are all about unwelcome invasions. Mushrooms, of course. Uh, they're great. They're a great product. Mushrooms, yeah. They come in three different varieties. You've got little ones, medium-sized ones, and big ones. Or, if you like, they call called buttons, cups, and flats. Now, what you do is, you can find them in the corner. They're very nutritionist. Nutritionist, too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, after the break. <laughs> <laughs> James, that was James, our salmon, just on his way from a canapé, but never mind. And my daughter in law is pregnant. We can't get her to the doctor. You know, so I don't know what to do. <laughs> As we can see there, the protest is now underway. Jill Isley here. What's your Well, I'm appalled that the government is um, prepared to enter into... <laughs> well, as you can see, there's uh, somewhat uh, a move here to try and disrupt the broadcast, but... We're not trying to disrupt nothing. Not being a machine, anyway. This is perhaps the sort of thing that doesn't do your cause any good, I would say. certainly made me pay attention. Now time for you to pay attention as I introduce our gorgeous first guest. She's a woman who wakes up with a million different men every morning. Please welcome GMTV's Penny Smith. To the show, Penny. What have you been doing to the audience? <laughs> now, listen, this first clip of yours sees you coming to the rescue of someone else's TV nightmare. So, why is this a nightmare for you? Um, it's just one of those um, things where you hope that you're never really going to be exposed for certain things. <laughs> this sounds a bit dodgy. <laughs> But you know, like behind the desk when you're doing things or when you're sitting on the sofa and you know you're not moving, there are certain things that you just don't want other people to see. Right. There's lots of things that you don't want other people to see. You don't want to see people, you know, see all the, the mess that goes on behind the sofa on the GMTV sofa, for Sorry. example. Sorry. We throw all our scripts behind us. The back of the sofa is a complete nightmare. It's full of old buns and bits of paper. <laughs> Occasionally you throw over something like I threw over John Stapleton's shoes one day by mistake. <laughs> well, should we see the clip? Go on then. Let's Here see it clip. comes. Okay, we're going to take the right leg out to the side, out and in. Bit of fancy footwork here, out and in. Make sure that your hips are facing forward. Keep the heel nice and high. Couple more to go, keep going. Use the arms. And again. Okay. So what 
What was going through your mind at that precise moment? I was just then? thinking, I can't believe I've put those whopping great trainers on today. Now I'm in a smart suit and he's that's on the bottom. Now, listen, Jim TV you've done for, uh, for a number of years now. In fact, TV generally you've done for a few years. What was your first TV nightmare? First border television. Mm -hmm. The first time I ever broadcast it was so awful. I'd been told anyway about the fact that the, the autocue um, goes to your speed. But of course, the light comes on, the red light comes on, and in your earpiece, it's the first time you ever hear, have an earpiece, so you've got all these people talking to you and you just, you just freeze up. So I started reading the autocue. And I read it, and I read it faster and faster and faster. And Edna, who was the autocue operator, was winding it faster and faster and faster. <laughs> and it was one of those races that I wasn't going to win. It no, just took win, a while. <laughs> and at the end, I, was like, I finished, I think, in the middle of a sentence. I just took a breath. And the autocue stopped, and I thought, Oh, yeah, I remember now. You <laughs> just stop when you stop. It was so awful. I must have looked so weird as well, because I was sweating and my eyes were... <laughs> Why not? <laughs> of course, it wouldn't happen now, would it, Penny? Oh, of course not. No, Those sort of things now. never happen no, now. No, because we're going to put it to the test, Penny. What? Yeah. Now, Penny, in your poshest, your best newsreading voice, mm -hmm. could you now read what is on that camera over there? I sometimes wish I'd never been born at all. I see a little silhouette of a man, Scaramouche, Scaramouche, <laughs> will you do the Fandango? Thunderbolt and lightning, very, very frightening me. Galileo, 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 Figaro, Mrs. Magnifico, I'm just a poor boy, nobody loves me, he's just a poor boy from the poor family, same as my most he's come easy to go, busy man, I just didn't know. let him go, busy man. <laughs> come on, <laughs> it's the come on. Your final clip involves a little bit of, um... Oh. Because you like the odd one, don't you, Penny? Oh, I, well, I do, but I don't usually do it on air. <laughs> what are we about to see? No, we're about to see... Can, can I just explain that this was filming... We were filming abroad, we were filming in Greece. It was on Mykonos. We had had four hours sleep. It was one of those <laughs> nightmare scenarios. Four hours sleep, woke up. We'd been filming all day. It was extremely hot. Sat down for lunch, didn't fancy lunch because it was a bit greasy, so I didn't eat very much. And then we were doing this Shirley Valentine piece. It was right. supposed to be me at a table, sea behind, beach, you know, and it was one of those moments, and it was supposed to be a romantic moment. And I had to do this piece to camera. And the only thing we could get was a bottle of Retsina. Which you like, obviously. I love, re used to love Retsina. <laughs> <laughs> And we started off, and there was a bit of a problem at the beginning. I had to take a sip of Retsina, put it down do my piece to camera, put the glass down, you know, have another sip and put the glass down. Well, we had a helicopter going over and then we had the sea was too noisy and then the, I, fell, I fell off the chair actually because it was on rocks and, <laughs> and, and it carried on and on and on. And on. And shall we see it? Here it comes. I bet Shirley Valentine. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what was that saying? <laughs> I bet Shirley Valentine. She <laughs> bottle of Retsina before she did a scene. After she did a scene, <laughs> to do the scene at the end of the scene. <laughs> hey, what? <laughs> I feel a bit sick. Bet <laughs> <laughs> Shirley Valentine didn't have to drink three bottles of Retsina to do this scene. Even the last one, Penny, was a little iffy, wasn't it? It was a little bit dodgy, wasn't it? And actually, what you didn't see was me being helped off the beach by Sam the Sound Girl. <laughs> well, listen, as she drifts off backstage to drink <laughs> five or six more crates, could you say thank you to Penny Smith, everyone? Come on. <laughs> and now, for some clips close to Penny's heart from the world of news, take a look at these. Now, if you're not familiar with the boxing term South Paw, well, this is one of them. <laughs> I 
tell you, we have more team speed on this show than you know about. Okay. You know these words are hot off the press. <laughs> a lot of 40s off to the north. Specifically, the forecast for our region, partly cloudy, we will be rather cool overnight. Rather cool, but warm enough for a fly. Shifting to the southeast. Just showers late. Overnight low of 54 degrees, and we'll go to that extended forecast. <coughs> go on, mate. Spit it out. The Wall Street Journal says an unexplained butter shortage is likely to drive up the price of food such as ice cream, cheese, and baked goods like croissants. <laughs> Dairy farmers may be celebrating the price hikes, but... <laughs> end up the big losers. I'm assuming that's butter being made. Ben and, Ice Cream and Ben and Jerry's both say they'll be forced to raise their prices because butterfat is a key <laughs> ice cream ingredient. Hmm. And to paraphrase a famous ad, I can't believe that is butter. Now then, you've heard of an embarrassment of riches. This next batch is rich in embarrassment. To find out more, we ask the original breakfast babe, Anne Diamond. My TV nightmare was about birthdays. Not my birthday. In fact, it was nobody's birthday. That was the problem. I was presenting a programme called The Birthday Show. And, of course, the big guest celebrity um, on the show had to have had their birthday that day. Uh, which was great. Sometimes we had some really famous people who'd been born on that day. Well, this particular day was uh, May the 16th, 1987. And I thought it was Frankie Howard's birthday. And the researchers thought it was Frankie Howard's birthday. And the crew thought so as well. And the audience did as well. And it was all going swimmingly until I realised that something quite fundamental was wrong. Nothing but mm. questions. And for, I mean, I, I could sense he was uneasy about it, <laughs> and that's why I just <laughs> had to ask the obvious right. question. Yeah, it's just your birthday, isn't it? Because no. this is the birthday show. This is why you're here, isn't it? I just, I've, I've been wondering. I, no, it's not my birthday. <laughs> I mean, it's good. Where's the research? Get rid of it. Shoot the research. I have honestly. I mean, is that much the reason I'm supposed to be here? Because it's my birthday. Well, yeah. I mean, ah. I've never heard it. No, it, it, uh, what, oh, what's that then? Is that really? Is that really? My birthday, dear, is in March. Oh. So it's gone. I'm the piss gaze. <laughs> yes, well, there are no words to describe how you feel at that moment because your research and the questions that are in your head and all of the sort of briefing that you've done yourself on your guest, on what you want from him, just shatters and falls to the ground around your feet. And you know that then you're flying by the seat of your pants. And luckily, Frankie Howard was a professional. The name's Brosnan, Pierce Brosnan. As Bond, a suave, sophisticated British agent, he's licensed to kill and prepared to risk life and limb for Queen and Country. He's able to crack safes, able to crack enemy codes, but totally unable to crack open a bottle of bubbly. <laughs> And now, competition time. What's that very, very expensive old thing Richard's bouncing up and down on? The lady says it's something you bounce up and down to bring your wind up. <laughs> no! Okay, You're all right wrong. One. Judy? The right one, the right answer. We've got lots in him from the basket. What the hell is he doing? Baker from New Hampshire, and she says quite correctly, it is, bizarrely, an exercise seat. That's how the Victorians got their exercise. <laughs> that's my kind of exercise. <laughs> this is a Homer Simpson exercise machine. Anyway, that's what it was. She gets £500. Oh! <laughs> Well, that's dear old Richard out of the running for the Antiques Roadshow. Anyway, that's almost it for part one. Coming up after the break, Psycho Ram gets in. And Bob Willis gets caught out. See you in part two. <laughs>